What's up, Rube? It's Little Big Robots back, obviously, with another video. Um, today I'm going to be looking at one of my. These are uh, three new additions to one of my favorite lines. Uh, I don't collect many lines, um, but I do uh, collect some. And one of my criteria for those lines is that they have to be something that I just really love, obviously, but also something that's pretty collectible, uh, meaning. Um, I, I, you know, if I wanted to collect all gunpla kits in the world ever made, then I'd be in trouble because we'd have, you know, too many kits to for me to, uh, you know, uh, buy and go after. But you have lines like Rahio, uh, certain lines like that um, that are collectible. They're well within my uh, means, and also more uh, a recent enough line that I can uh, collect them no problems and keep track of them. You know, this is the McFarlane uh, Warhammer Forty Thousand line. Uh, I collected it since the beginning. I'll be doing some comparisons to the old um, um, the old figures compared to this, these new three figures. Um, and I have to say that there were a lot of complaints I had with the old ones, uh, even though they're one of my favorite lines, period. The figures and stuff like that, I, you know, I do have some issues with them. Um, but also with the packaging, with the paint jobs, stuff like that. The builds and stuff, or, I'm sorry, the molds and stuff are usually always good. Um, but um, the paint jobs are sometimes a little off. So this guy we're going to look at first here. Uh, and this is this is one of the first improvements really with the line so far is that they have these cool um, uh, these cool new boxes. The last one, the old ones were more like this. This is a gold edition, but it isn't much different than than what they are uh, what they you know where this gold edition just has the gold label and a little special special figure or something like that but you can see that they were smaller they didn't feel as epic um they had some pretty cool art on it i think these are much more a kind of warhammer 40k ish art i'd rather see an illustration than the actual picture of the toy if you're showing me the toy on the front i do not need to see a picture of the toy i'd much rather have some cool artwork especially a box like this you could sit down it also looks like a codex or something like that you'd see you know this looks like a box uh, you know a an army box you'd find in a, a warhammer store um what's cool is it comes with these little cards in here let me see if i can grab one real quick for you i think it's just fluffy stuff there's nothing really on the card i don't think um also a really really big improvement really big improvement is that when you open the figs before, see if I can show you on this one maybe, you're gonna see all those classic little plastic line, uh, plastic elastic bits that hold them together. I have absolute hatred for those, th for those things. They're bad for the environment. It takes forever to open them up. You know, it's just annoying. Um, you get all these little pieces everywhere that you gotta worry about your cats swallowing. With these, you do more like a joy toy box. You just open them up, you pull, I know this is gonna sound crazy. You just pull the figure out of the box. Isn't that weird? And what's funny is no rubber bands or plastic bits were used. And guess what? These guys stayed in place. Wow! What an what an amazing. <laughs> we don't we stop using those rubber bands everywhere. Here's the card that comes with them. I'm not going to show you all of these. It's just a little fluff card. But again, it's it's cool. It's a nice piece of artwork. Um, I like it sitting there. I'd rather have that artwork been different than the one on the box. But whatever. Um, you get this absolutely ridiculous. L ridiculous little round stand. I don't have one on me. I might somewhere I put it in the other room because I I almost toss them away. I'm going to use them for something. But it doesn't even cover barely one foot. These stands are ridiculous. Give us a real proper stand or just put something else in that area. So this is the Wolf Guard Space Wolves. The Space Wolves were are like wolf people. It's uh, honestly um, a lot of the chapters have turned more into that I know Space Marines now and lore and stuff are almost like, uh, you know, like knights of old. They even speak with that kind of funny, <laughs> you know, like, hell, how art thou? And it's, it's, it's pretty goofy. The Space Wolves turned into literal, like, werewolf kind of people or whatever, I, you know. But it's all in good fun. The Warhammer 40K is really, really just goofy. Uh, but that's what we like about it. Um, the, the articulation on these guys has never been amazing. I don't really think that's the point. You're not, you can kind of get them in some positions, but not super great positions. Really, if you wanted to do an, a great uh, pose with this guy, I mean, that's a cool pose just right there. Oops! A good pose with this guy, you're going to need to use probably a stand. They just don't really... They stand up, but they just don't really have a natural feel to their, how they stand. Um, but again, I, I don't know if that's just... 
I mean, McFarland is known for some quality, but overall they have to keep it semi-low quality. The paint job, stuff like that, because they want to keep it affordable. Having said that, this is a pretty good paint job, but and the build is pretty good, but they're just kind of... Um, once you get him in a position, you got to just kind of leave him there. Let's just say this. Um, so he's a Space Wolf dude. Uh, the axe is nice. It's got a nice metallic finish on it. The bolter is a bolter. You know, the, the, the gun model itself is actually really nice. This has an actual little... See, it's like Nordic or whatever. You, I'm sorry. I apologize if I don't know. It's used the right word. Whatever that, you know, Viking stuff is. And it's funny. They're like Space Vikings, which... I don't know, Warhammer some, these days embraces the, 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 the goofiness, but then doesn't. It takes itself way too seriously, but it's, it's fun. I like reading the little b books and stuff. They're like noir novels from, the, you know, fluff novels from back in the day, in the 30s and 50s and stuff. Um, his face is nice. What's really cool, but sorry about that. What's cool about this is there is an entire market for um, custom faces. And I have a feeling this guy's going to be painted up a bit. I actually wanted to get, uh, purchase some faces, some custom faces from eBay or Etsy or whatever. Max, I like it a lot. It's, 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 a, it's a fine weapon. Um, I like the little thing here, but again, no um, wash or anything. So just plain color. So it's hit or miss with McFarlane as far as that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, it is Warhammer. So you can buy a blank or a gray version of these guys. And an artist proof, they call it, and you can you could you know paint them whatever you want. So if you want to do that, go for it. Uh, I've done that on a couple, and it's really really fun. These big chunky guys are really fun. If you want to take these guys apart, put them in really really hot water, not boiling of course, but really hot water. Let them soak and then pop the sockets out. Um, they can be a bit difficult to get back together. Just FYI, um, jetpack is standard and cool. So he's he's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and set him there. Uh, next, we're going to look at the chaos guy. Chaos is funny because in Warhammer, it's supposed to be the like they're you know worshippers of these dark gods and stuff like that. But they're completely unfrightening, like non-frightening. Um, the way they describe them, they're just kind of. Uh, um, grumpy space marines, you know. Again, the artwork is better. I'd rather see artwork on the stuff on the back than the actual picture of the figure. Um, and I guess this is, I just really noticing that since I've started this video, is I guess these are supposed to look like, uh, a, you know, a box set or something that you find in a Warhammer store. That's really cool. So they, they could put them on a Warhammer store shelf and they look really cool. Um, this guy's nice. He has some cool details uh, similar to this guy. So here is the gold label one. Um, not bad, not bad. Um, again, chaos is just not scary to me at all. I think it's kind of, and it's very Mad Max. It's like Mad Max villain. And the thing is about Mad Max is that the villains are, and the people in, in it generally are kind of supposed to be wacky and crazy and stuff. Not, you know, almost comical because of the insanity of the future. You know, these guys are comical and I think they're trying to be scary and they're really not. Um I don't know. It's just I, I, chaos to me is kind of kind of goofy and Warhammer, but again, it's a lot of fun to read about. Silly, you know, um, monsters and war and stuff. Um, some of the joints are loose. You're going to see that, which is really hit or miss. Again, with McFarlane, the quality control on McFarlane is not horrible, but just be aware when you get one of their figures, you're going to have some issues. Some some legs will be real loose and some will be real tight, and some things will be held well and some won't. Oh, oh, I didn't bring it. There, let me go grab. There are actually separate hands for these guys. Let me grab those. So what we have here is this guy came with a plasma pistol as well. It's all horned up and stuff, of course. Again, you can see that the blue paint is nice, but there's no highlights to it. So sometimes they'll have highlights like in his face, and then sometimes they won't. Uh, with the wolf guy, you got two fists, which this is new. You didn't get fists, changeable fists with the old um, sets. And this guy has two, you know, like a reaching, you know, brother join us that kind of thing or like kind of a, i think that's to hold his axe but i might have there anyway or no that's for his gun i'm sorry because it has the trigger finger so the hands are a nice little addition there the extra parts so you know that's an improvement over the old of the old ones his axe is fine but again there's no highlight on it a, a quick wash would do it this is kind of so bendable that i'm afraid it's going to kind of stay bent all the time so you might be aware of that um the axes are really, and weapons are really hard to get in their hands, but once you do, they're pretty sturdy. I mean, it's cool. You know, it's, it's again, what the problem I have with McFarlane is that um, some models or toys, I should say, you're going to get a nice highlight and details like the eyes, and they'll sometimes have some dry brushing. Let me see if I have an example here. Um, I think this, this is a good point of comparison as well. This is my probably my favorite, and it's the um, uh, Necron Warrior. 
Um, see, so you can see that's not dry brushing, but they put a little washy kind of stuff. Kind of washed a little bit. You know, they dry brushed a little silver there. You know, you get stuff like that. There, that's been silver dry brushed. You know, that's labor intensive stuff. I don't believe they use machines for dry brushing at all, and there's none on here, so you get just this plain gold. So again, though, this is Warhammer. It's based on the game, the board, uh, the you know the the tabletop game. So you could paint them yourself. Just use a basic wash. Um, you know, I used a dark dark one, and it was a little bit too much. But on these guys, maybe that would look cool. It'd really bring this out and make it look crimson. Right now, this looks you know like cherry red, like a cartoon red. Which again, it's chaos. Chaos are not scary. I, you know, they could have easily made a scary character like this guy here. If you look at the artwork, Ugh, I'm knocking everything over. See how much darker his reds are. You know, he's beat up and looks a little scary. He's got stuff hanging off of him. So I'm glad I have the Chaos Guy, of course, but this is definitely not my favorite. Probably be fun for customs, though, because of all the fun little stuff everywhere. And the backpack is interesting. They have, I always did like these kind of jets. I thought those were kind of fun. But, you know, there's, oh, wow, I'm scary. I've got horns on my my backpack. You know, it's just kind of goofy, but whatever. So this is the one that everybody's been waiting for, I'm sure. This is the Terminator. Terminator is essentially a space marine and a, a larger chunk of armor, a larger set of armor uh, meant for, like, you know, breaching and fighting uh, big aliens and stuff like that. Terminators are, you know, granted, I was I got into Warhammer in 1987. So, uh, you know, to me, old school is way, way more old school than most people I meet in Warhammer now. The, the one I grew up on, the Terminators were never really that large, so this is more accurate to me. But these days, they do feel much larger. They're supposed to be much larger. Um, the box is larger the artwork is great um you know it comes with again a card with the same artwork i wish the artworks on the back and front would have been different um and you come with this ridiculous tiny stand for this massive i know you can put it on one foot and just help some stand or whatever but it's just like can you just stop with the little tiny stands it's really kind of just give me a regular stand or put something else in that space of the package give me an extra bit of plastic but having said that, this model or this figure is great. It's 50 bucks right now. The thing is about McFarlane is all, all of them, except for one, because I have collected the entire line, minus the artist proofs. I don't really care about the artist proofs that much. Um, the entire line minus one, which is the white sister of battle, I believe, I have. And um, um, what was I going to say? I can't remember. Um, I'll get back to that point. I can't remember my point. I just, I just lost my point. Um, but um, all of them have fantastic looks and stuff like that and can stand on their own, but uh, not all of them um, have the same uh, you know, intimidation factor. This guy is supposed to have that. And when you compare him to just a standard Marine, which this should be an old school Marine. Somebody correct me because they asked. This is, a, this is the first one I got. This is a Primar Primaris Marine. Primaris being the uh, Space Marine Gen 2, basically. Uh, not to spoil anything, but a guy, uh, Magos or whatever, invented the uh, Primaris Marines. Invented. It came up with them, whatever, over 10,000 years, blah, 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 blah. As backup, and they're supposed to be like quite a bit taller than a standard old-school Marine. I take it this is an old-school Marine because he's a Space Wolf, and he also has an old-school look to him. If so, this guy should be larger, but compare the Primaris to this standard uh, Terminator, and it's a bit, you know, a bit underwhelming. I'll, to, to give you a point of example, uh, an example, this is an Ogren, and an Ogren is like a half Ogre, half human in Warhammer, or whatever. Was it just an Ogre? I don't, anyway, whatever. He is bigger than the, the Terminator, and I would think, somebody tell me the official measurements, whatever, but in my mind, I would say the Terminator should be at least as tall. This guy should have been larger. But in my old school days, these guys were about the size of Marines, just a little bulkier. So, and I also have an orc, which I can compare him to, but I didn't need to get him out of the box or whatever. And I need to, I don't want to do that right now. So the size is okay, but the character itself, the actual uh, build and the actual model, the molds are fantastic. I love, I've always loved these legs. They remind me of a Titan legs, uh, like a, a Imperator Titan or something. Um, it's weird. Some of these parts have like a, they sound like they have a clacky part, and I guess it's just the, the tension. He's a little loose, which is unfortunate. He's really loose. Um, but he's holding his position so far. He, again, he's not going to be able to do crazy kicks and, you know, 
you know, flying and stuff like that. That's not the point with these guys. Space Marines and all of these guys are supposed to be just kind of walking tanks, especially these guys. Um, so you can get him into a cool position and, and, you know, pointing or using his power fist here or whatever, pointing his gun, and blah, 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 you know, toy photography stuff. And see, he's holding it pretty well. Um, but that will loosen up over time. Oh, my point was, as I've collected this entire line, except for that one gold, I'm sorry, that one white platinum uh, sister battle, which I need to pick up, but people want 50 bucks and stuff for it on eBay or whatever. Um, and all of them, everyone I've ever seen, minus her, has gone on sale at some point. But what I notice is like with this original Primaris, um, these will sell out and you won't see them again. I don't know if McFarland is going to reprint them or what, but this is my original Space Marine. This is what made me fell in love with this line. Um, so these guys... I'm debating if I want to buy more because if they sell out, I like to have two or three for customs and, you know, stuff like that. I don't necessarily keep one in the box just to, for money or whatever, but I like to have some kind of backup in case I'm uh, doing some customs and stuff. And, you know, so I might pick up some more of these. So just be aware that some of these might sell out and you never see them again. Some stick around forever and this $50 guy goes down to, uh, I've literally see the, seen the $50 ones and the expensive ones go down to 12 bucks. Uh, 10 bucks and stuff like that so <clears throat> excuse me keep that in mind i'd say that is this one worth 50 bucks man this is a really cool terminator this is a if you have if you're a warhammer fan or if you have a warhammer fan in your life and you set that down on their shelf that's it, it it's cool it looks like it's just a giant uh warhammer piece like something they pulled off the tabletop right this guy you know they're i think they're 25 or something same with the, the normal ones oh, they're fine they're fine uh again if you compare that to a uh, marvel legends marvel legends are uh, 112 scale figures you know don't say six inch figures say 112 please uh, and and you get a lot more plastic and whatever the paint jobs are not always the best you can see here on the terminator's face just how plain that is there's if it, that needs a wash so bad you see how plain that, that but it's, it's a cool helmet, don't get me wrong, but it's just a plain white chunk sitting there. Even the Ultramarine logo is scratched, so that's cool. But then you come over here and there's nothing. There's a, actually looks like a little dry brushing there, you know. So maybe this guy has a little bit of some extra details because he was more expensive. Um, but even with that, I still think it's a cool, fun figure. So to sum up, this line, what is important about this line is that it is not to me the greatest warhammer line ever that would be joy toys line that is really high quality they're smaller but they're much more detailed you get a ton and ton and ton of figures so if you're going to collect them you have tons of choices you get great big guys can this one this guy stand anymore i love this uh necron i want more of this necron warrior but they're so expensive and people just refuse to sell them for anything less than like 50 bucks stuff oh my gosh he went he usually he stands but anyway there's the necron um uh what was i going to say i uh, i don't really can like this line because it's a big warhammer line i don't like this line necessarily because it's warhammer warhammer to me is kind of just fun fluffy stuff you know so it's not really a big deal um but as a toy line i absolutely adore this line this guy made me fall in love with it because it's just so chunky and everything and i just love the fact that if you were a kid and you had three or four of these you know, you just play war with them and bang them together, and they're pretty sturdy. Sh sure, they're not going to do the coolest, like, uh, kick poses or whatever. I don't care about that stuff. What I care about with toys is do they seem fun to play with if you're a kid? And I could just imagine, imagine having a kid and holding this guy. I've talked about this before. And just how chunky it is and just weighty. They're very weighty, you know. Fantastic. I think they'll probably last for quite a while, too. A lot of figures that get so loose over time and so beat up. These guys will probably last quite a while. Even if they do get a little loose, they'll still be able to hold this basic standing pose, I think, because it, the weight is distributed down on these wide feet. So really, really cool. Um, if you're a Warhammer fan, you might find a lot of little issues with them. I do as a Warhammer person, kind of. But I don't really care because I love the toyness of this line. They're just super fun and chunky. I do want more of this guy, though. I'm a little bit scared that he's going to get sold out, and then it'll be start, you know, showing up on eBay for hundred bucks and stuff. Um, so I might pick another one up. I did get the three pack at a little bit of a discount on McFarland's uh, store, but still, uh, these guys, I, I'm fine with just having one up. But these guys, man, holy moly, this, this is pretty pretty neat. <laughs> anyway, let me know what you guys think out there. Or, you know. Do you care that they're Warhammer or not? I personally don't. I just care that they are. Uh, 
chunky fun baddies that you can smash together. So really, really fun. Enjoy, everybody. Let me know what you think. Have a good one. Bye-bye.